एक मोजा सो डू यू हैव ऑल ऑफ यू हैव ब्रॉट अ सॉक यू कैन राइट ऑन चैट आई मीन वी विल कीप यू ऑन म्यूट जनरली सो वेन एवर वी आस्क यू समथिंग यू कैन राइट ऑन द चैट so have people brought a sock just one sock i mean you can actually go go to your uh, go in your house and get it if you don't have i mean just one sock and from our side it can be even a dirty sock but yes a clean one would be a better idea because i am going to ask you to do something with it so okay two three people have said yes those who don't have i mean i can give you a, uh, give you two minutes and you can go and get one any sock but it shouldn't be a toe sock other than toe sock in any ordinary normal sock will do so okay friends uh, i mean some people are saying yes others can get it meanwhile i'll tell you the exercise on the sock so uh, what you have to do is like i have a sock here you have to wear it on your hand right i'll wear it on this hand so you have to wear the sock in one hand and imagine that this is an animal so this is now an animal and currently this animal i mean animal is only for the length length of the sock i mean your hand beyond is not the animal this is the animal right and currently this animal does not have a joint there is no joint right that means the animal cannot bend at any place so there is no joint no bending or twisting now you have to make this animal move the exercise is to make it move so how will you make it move and uh, it would be nice if some of you can uh, uh, like start your videos so we can see what you are doing otherwise we only see uh, names and we don't know if some people are doing this so ah swapna khari ma'am is there so friends uh, those of you who who have a sock and are using it can actually yeah so deepak kohar has done it so others you have to wear the sock and now try moving this animal when it doesn't have a joint no joint so see if you can move it i can see some children some uh, familiar children here so but i have no idea if people have socks or not so here's one child trying to move uh, this is hridesh hridesh i will spotlight you for everyone so hridesh aap isko move kar rahe hain if if you are moving it you are moving as uh, move move let's see see you are moving from here like your uh, um ankle no no ankle what to be called uh, elbow so aap apni elbow ko move kare aur yahan pe you cannot move the animal does not have a joint so no bending or no twisting and you can't move your elbow that's your elbow that's not the anim animal's elbow to us animal ke paas koi bhi joint nahi hai to aap apni apne kohani ka istemal nahi kar sakte तो आपको मूव करना है ताकि वो वो एनिमल उसके उसको खुद मूव कर पाए सो so, जिनी कह रहे हैं जिनी सेइंग विदाउट जॉइन द एनिमल इज अनएबल टू मूव सो अदर्स कैन यू ट्राई हृदय इज स्टिल ट्राइंग So Amit Singh is saying true no joints. So uh, so if there are no joints, 
I like what Ginny is saying. Do you agree to what Ginny is saying? Ginny is saying the animal cannot live. What do you think? Others? Pradyum, then Hridesh, Del, I don't know what's your name, but yeah, you are also saying no. So, so like many people are saying that it cannot move. If it doesn't have a joint, it cannot move. Vaibhav Pandya is saying it can crawl. So Vaibhav Pandya, you will have to show it's crawling. It, 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 like instead of imagining it, uh, okay, so Deepak uh, has said, Deepak, please write it on, on for public because others can see your answer. So Deepak Kuhar has said that it can move maybe with contraction and expansion of muscles, but even with contraction of me, uh, and expansion of me, me, muscles, see that it requires bending or twisting somewhere, right? I mean, unless it can bend somewhere or twist somewhere, even muscular contraction expansion will not help, right? So uh, anybody, Webhav also, uh, Webhav, are you convinced? Like anyone who's not convinced, uh, please try doing it. Uh, so Amit Singh is saying uh, the whale or fish can float, but again, cannot swim without joints. So. Mm. So all uh, all of you, th those of you who, who are not convinced can actually try doing it and see. Hridesh has said like caterpillar moves. So see, we do have a slide on caterpillar movement and I'll come to it. But caterpillar for, for, for even that kind of movement, it will require some amount of bending. It should be able to bend its body. Otherwise, it cannot move. Right. Uh, my question is, do you think there are... Uh, uh, like living beings who who have no joints? Do you think there are living beings like that? Harshal is saying yes. Can you give examples? Earthworm. Uh, okay, earthworm doesn't have joints like ours, uh, but they it can earthworm can uh, twist its body. I mean, twist means bend its body. Amoeba can actually change the body's shape, can bend, can actually stick out an arm. Uh, so Deepak Kuhar has said unicellular organisms. Yes, there are small unicellular organisms. You have many bacteria also, though some other bacteria can have a whip-like tail with the help of which they can bend. They can't bend the whole body, but there is a tail which they can bend. And some others have hair on their bodies, so they can bend or uh, move those hair. Uh, Pradyumna has said, Pradyumna, please uh, write on, uh, on uh, the meeting itself so that everyone can see. Pradyumna has said plants. That's an excellent answer. Plants don't have joints, like they cannot bend. Uh, I mean, okay, a large number of plants. So uh, so they they don't show movement. Harshit uh, Dungra Koti saying it can jump. Harshit, what can jump? Harshal is saying people will, with disabilities. I mean, you will see that people have a large number of joints. I mean, even people with some disability would have, I mean, see my mouth. My mouth is moving because I have joints. I have my jaw has joints, like there are other joints. And my tongue is able to turn and twist and bend itself. So, so people can have disability in one part of their body. They can't have the whole body uh, frozen stiff. So, okay, I mean, well, most people are agreeing that this animal, the animal that you have with a sock in your hand, this animal cannot move. Now, please give this animal one joint, one joint, one place where it can bend itself and then try moving it. Okay, Harshit is saying uh, movement can be possible by jumping in human. Harshit, try doing it without any bending. You do it, don't bend anything and then try jumping. You have to try and do it and you will see that it's impossible. If you bend nothing, you will be able to move nothing. So now the exercise is that with this animal, <clears throat> yeah, so Deepak Pohar is also saying it's not possible without bending. Now this animal you can give uh, one joint, one place where it can bend, and now try moving it. 
So Hridesh is now doing, Hridesh, you are giving more than one joint, just one place. Right now, just one place where it can bend. I'm spotlighting uh, Hridesh. So Hridesh, you are bending it in more than one point, but I suppose you are bending it at your wrist. Only your wrist should be um, moving. Only your wrist. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Yes. So Hridesh is showing, showing how this animal could move with simply one joint. Would anybody else like to show? I mean, it's an interesting exercise, actually. So Deepak Kuhar is also showing. Yes, Deepak Kuhar is showing. I'll spotlight you. Uh, uh, just to say. Uh, so, yeah, so, okay. The, the bending can be uh, up and down. Also, it can be sideways also. Hmm. I mean, you can... Uh, uh, you can keep your, you can like this animal could do sideways bending, up and down bending or bending. So this one joint, uh, Vijay Lakshmi is saying hinge joint. Uh, Vijay Lakshmi will come to the kinds of joints. Right now I'm just like uh, talking about joints at all. I mean, any joint, any kind of joint. I'm saying this, this is having one joint. And now people can actually st uh, start giving two joints to this animal. So, uh, two joints, please. Introduce another joint. Sai, Sai Paranesh is also doing. So, who is ready to show with two joints? Anybody who wants to show? So Pradyumna, do you want to show? Pradyumna, I, I, I will spotlight. Uh, Pradyumna did not get spotlighted. Uh, is he spotlighted? Um, network problem from uh, Pradeem inside. Okay, there is some network problem. Okay. Anybody else wants to show? Our animal has two joints now. Harshit Dumra, you want to show? Harshit is showing with his hand only. Actually, the thing is, when we don't, when we are not wearing a saw, I mean, it. we, we use <laughs> the large num uh, number of joints that our fingers and hand has. But yes, he's showing it. Harshit Dungar Dung, uh, is showing. He's trying to keep two joints. But yes, the animal has much more movement. We can see that with two joints, the amount of uh, uh, movement the animal has increases a lot. So basically, the more joints, the more movement. Basically, joints give us a lot of flexibility and actually make, uh, make uh, give us many kinds of movements. So that was the idea I wanted to bring out. And uh, for this, this exercise is very good. I mean, you can introduce more joints and see how, how flexible your animal becomes. Uh, but now I have a question for all of you. Think of uh, your uh, hand, your hand. Now, your hand inside, your hand inside this sock and think of the sock as, as the skin. So what all does this hand, your hand, give, give to this animal? What function it is providing to so this, this imaginary animal? You can call it real also if you want. But what function is your hand providing? It's providing movement, yes. It's providing protection. Okay, how protection, Harsha? So, Shitish is saying protecting bones. So, uh, okay, Deepak Kuhar is saying it's providing a framework. Uh, yes, a frame or a framework. So, it's because of my hand that this has a shape. I mean, if I remove my hand, look what, uh, what can happen to this, uh, this saw. It can become like a 
crushed bag or uh, like shapeless thing but my hand is giving it a framework and therefore a a very clear shape the shape is coming from because of my hand so movement structure yes framework uh, so protecting bones okay protection probably what you mean is strength so so strength will also come from my hand is making the bone bony structure so which is probably giving the strength so protection in the sense of strength yeah if i if i hit some this with something it's the bony structure inside which will actually resist this it will give it some kind of strength so yes anything else uh, my hand gives it so the shape all kinds of movement the structure everything is coming from my hand without my hand this is like it has it's a shapeless bag yes a design yes so this is what a skeleton does see my hand is acting like layout of bones due to skin yeah inside the skin actually that's a correct way of saying would be that inside the skin the bones are giving it yes even flexibility like vijay uh, vijay lakshmi says that there's flexibility so the skeleton inside our bodies our bodies and other animal bodies also give all this they give a lot without the skeleton we won't have the strength the movement the flexibility the structure the design so now um, so skeleton has so many functions so now we will uh, uh, show a few things so uh, this is the exercise which i was showing you think of an animal without a joint and try moving it and introduce a joint then try moving it introduce another joint then try moving it so then the joints bring movement and flexibility right and now now the question what does this uh, your hand provide to this animal to the sock animal and like you people say structure movement framework uh, uh, strength uh, etc so so that's what a skeleton does that's those are functions of a skeleton and now we will look at a framework framework is kind of um, something that uh, that may be inside or provide the shape and strength so so here uh, actually somebody actually uh, did this exercise so this is the uh, x ray of a bus so when you see in x ray the bus looks like this and you can see the frame of the bus the framework of the bus of course you can see people sitting inside and their frames also but uh, here here's an x ray image x ray image of a jeep in which you can see what the two, two humans are doing and their frameworks also but the total structure of the uh, jeep is visible here uh, so here here comes the structure of animals which which has some stiff uh, stiff frame inside frame or framework what we call as dhacha in hindi so you can see the stiff frame inside these animals inside or outside it can be inside or outside but you can see the framework or the frame uh, here's a framework which of of a building which is being created so normally uh, first a framework is created here i mean you can see it's been created by wood here wood or other uh, rods or other things so first a frame is created on that frame then the whole body is built so all the um, what do you call them all the roofs and ceilings and all those are we call them lenters also they, they are laid out and walls are laid out after a frame frame is built then only they can stand so then the frame provides all the structure to the building so so here is also framework of a building in during construction you can see so uh, so here again so framework being built this is a very interesting example i mean i uh, i've already shown it to you otherwise you, this is a puzzle you can ask this puzzle to your friends which is the fastest uh, frame that can be um, erected in a second and then collapsed in a second 
सबसे जल्दी बनने वाला ढांचा और गिरने वाला ढांचा कौन सा है दुनिया में और वो एक छाता है uh, uh, umbrella is the fastest building frame so you can see its framework gets built within seconds and the the, uh, the uh, umbrella acquires this shape and the moment the frame collapses we we have an arrangement to collapse it the moment you will collapse it the uh, umbrella loses this shape the rounded shape so this is like you can ask this uh, trick question to your friends so this is also the, an example of a collapsing framework uh, so similarly our bodies have a frame or a framework which we call as the human skeleton and uh, the the skeleton actually allows us to a lot of movement i mean we we uh, started uh, like exploring with the help of our imaginary animal but it's because we have this framework or frame we call as skeleton that we we can do a whole lot of movements so let's start exploring our skeleton so here here's a kind of a puzzle for you which animal is this what do you think can you make out the animal from this uh, skeleton so people are saying cow or goat goat cow bull bull or a bison okay so uh pradyumn has asked me what is the difference between gliding and hinge joint i'll i'll come to joints just have some patience right now we are systematically going through this session so here is the uh the same animal with skin shown i mean the uh, the outer uh, outline shown so you can see that it's a cow cow or bull no it's a cow actually because you can see the udders who is this raptor deer goat okay so people think it can be a deer or a goat deer goat dinosaur sakshi <laughs> saying dinosaur <laughs> okay uh, so here is it, it is a goat skeleton actually i mean if you give an outline to this it seems like a goat a deer would be similar but this one is a goat okay how about this so some people are saying somebody is saying monkey cat tiger lion cat dog tiger so seems like this is a cat family i mean you can look at the teeth that gives you uh, some idea uh, so seems to be the cat family it is indeed somebody from the cat family most likely a small cat or a big cat but most likely a small cat <clears throat> somebody saying hyena also but this is somebody from the cat family could be a cheetah also but there will be minor differences i mean like one will have to go into a real detail to di di distinguish the skeleton of a cat and a cheetah uh, so vijayalakshmi saying felide which is the feline family which is the cat family iberian lynx <laughs> okay <laughs> maybe you see yeah i mean see i am uh, i am not a specialist of the cat family so anybody who is a specialist would be able to see minute differences i shall is saying fox um well can't say anyway who is this
duck, swan, chick, a bird. Yes, certainly from bird family, we can clearly see swan, flamingo, chick. Very clearly from the bird family, certainly. So no doubt about that. Pigeon, chick, flamingo. Okay, most likely this is a pigeon. So <clears throat> from the bird family, most likely this is a pigeon. And like I said, you know, I mean, those who are um, experts on birds, so somebody saying dove, dove and pigeon are quite similar. So only people who can identify very minute details would be able to say. Who is this? This should be very clear. Okay, lizard, crocodile, alligator, monitor lizard, chipkali. Chipkali is a kind of lizard. <laughs> Harshit is going to dinosaurs. These are all current animals. But anyway, this is uh, a, most likely an alligator. So, okay. So, now friends, can you now, I mean, we have discussed it, but can you think of uh, functions of a skeleton for all these animals and for us? What are the functions of a skeleton? Like Nitika says, provide a framework to the body. Yes. And help in proper movements. Yes. Protects internal organs. So we will clearly see that a lot of all the delicate, but delicate organs or very, very important organs are protected by uh, special parts of the skeleton. So skeleton has special arrangement to protect uh, internal organs, particularly very, very, very important organs. Uh, so allows movement, protects, provides framework. So yeah, rib cage, as we see, we can see the rib cage protects our um, heart, lungs. Uh, so, so it's a cage. Why do you think the uh, rib cage is made like a cage with uh, indi uh, individual single bones and not uh, not a solid one solid bone? Vedant is saying connect to other bones and muscles by ligament. We'll come to ligaments. Uh, okay, Isha has said something very important. Helps in balancing. Uh, Isha, would you like to say how how balancing is achieved with the help of uh, a skeleton? That's a very good answer. So you, uh, if, if you can say a few words, I mean, I will uh, unmute you. Isha, would you like to say? How, how the skeleton helps in balancing? Others, would you like to say how uh, skeleton helps in balancing? Amit Singh has said by distributing weight. Excellent. Yeah, so, so weight is properly distributed. Like our leg bones are far thicker and uh, heavier. Even our hips are far heavier than any bones in, on the upper side of the body. Uh, so uh, Amit Singh has said when we stretch our arms when or when we kick, kick our football, yes. So that's also correct. Like uh, there is constant balancing, which is of course achieved with the help of muscles. But there's one thing very, very significant, very important about the way the skeleton is designed, which allows for balancing. Uh, I mean, what is something which if, even whether you're sleeping or standing or doing anything at all, there's something about the structure itself, which Nitika has given the answer and Amit Singh has also given the answer, symmetry. This is very interesting. Our, our skeletons are symmetrical. So they, you, you can have two limbs or four limbs or animals have six limbs or eight limbs, but you will never see an animal with seven or five or three simply because, or if three are there, then the third one would be in the center. 
so that there's perfect symmetry on both sides because that age balancing a lot our bodies are inside not symmetrical inside our stomach is on one side heart is a little on one side so inside intestines okay intestines are mostly symmetrical but many organs on liver on one side kidney kidneys are symmetrical so okay many organs are asymmetrical but outside the body is nearly symmetrical and uh, yeah pancreas is also on one side so yeah so to so wait so that the body can move with um, good balancing of weights so that's that's actually uh, okay shitej has said if rib cage is continuous i would i had asked so children who have never felt your rib cage so please uh, put your hands on your uh, bones here front and back actually front also i mean try to feel your bones and you will see the bones are not continuous they are like uh, like sticks many sticks 13 sticks sticks one after another uh, on your chest and behind so there is a rib cage it's like a uh, like a cage or a pinjra in uh, in hindi there is a word asthi pinjar pinjar is for pinjra pinjra is a cage so we are built like a cage so why a cage why not continuous bone in in the rib cage so somebody said shitish says we will fall down but suppose we had a cage no in not a cage suppose we had a continuous bone from here to here what would happen what could happen uh shitish is saying no movement but movement comes from joints see rib cage well has some joints but uh sai has said we can't bend there will be no flexibility see most of our ribs are themselves static i mean okay rib cage has some flexibility to allow for our breathing but even if there were not individual ribs uh i i think they can they could have breathing possible so i mean my i my personal thought is so deepak kumar is saying will not be able to increase or decrease the volume of chest cavity i mean think of suppose i had a continuous bone from here to here and the bone could have a a, a, a joint in the middle then that bone could perhaps bulge right i personally think this is for a uh, weight reduction otherwise it would have been a very heavy bone on top of our body and would become very hard to uh, handle so much of, of weight on top the uh, i mean um, the weight on top is here this was essential uh, this was essential to protect our uh, look at the skull skull has like it's a like a box and what does it protect it protects the brain the brain is the most valuable organ in our body the brain needed heavy protection so there is a very very strong skull provided and these joints between skull bones are fixed joints nothing moves here so it's it's a solid bony box which protects our uh, uh protects our brain and uh, whenever a brain has to be reached this has to be cut open otherwise it doesn't open at all doesn't open and protects the brain very well because even if other parts of your body get damaged you can still function and those can get healed but the brain getting damaged is the most serious injury you can have so brain is properly protected then there is the rib cage so we were actually discussing you see rib cage does have some kind of flexibility so it swells up and contracts during the uh, during breathing but i was saying that suppose suppose we had one bone here and one bone here continuous bone breathing po possibly swelling could have been still been possible or maybe the lungs uh, the maximum size Of, of uh, this could be kept within which the lung could contract and expand but 
it would increase the weight a lot. Uh, so there is, Shitij has asked in an operation or surgery, the, the surgeons cut the skull, skull, yes, they have to cut the skull. There's no other way. Harshal has asked after someone dies, the body becomes skeleton. Will the brain will be there? Brain is soft material, soft tissue, which rots. All soft tissue decomposes first. After a long time, bones will also decompose. Bone, bones will take thousands of years to decompose. They do decompose. But the first things to decompose is soft tissue or softer parts of our body. So skin and all the tissue, including the brain, decomposes. So, so Ridge K protects two things. What, what are those things? You can see that there is the, um, the lungs which are protected, then the heart behind that. So heart is also a very important organ. And even liver. Liver is also a very, very important organ, which like helps our body in multiple ways. I mean, including removing toxins or poisons, then producing a large number of substances. So liver is also a very large organ. You can see it hidden here. So the rib cage protects three very, very important organs. Stomach is here, but stomach is important, but not as crucial as heart, lung. And uh, uh, I think pancreas is below. It's the liver here. Uh, so yeah, liver is protected by the floating ribs. These ribs are called floating ribs, the ones that are down below. So now we come to this question. Do you think the earthworm has a skeleton? Shitij is saying yes. Two people have said no. So more people are saying no. Shitij is saying with lot of joints. So Harshal is saying it has flexible band, backbone like snake. So Dell, what, whatever his name is saying, no. So those people who are saying no, then how does its body maintain its shape? See, we said skeletons give shape, right? So how would an earthworm maintain its shape? Shit is saying that's why it can make its body curve. So maybe uh, so... Sai Paranesh is saying earthworm has liquid skeletons. Any other answer? Flexible vertebrate. Vertebrates means those who have backbone. Shit is saying due to single bone with lot of joints. Any other answer? iPhone is saying cartilages, which is a softer variety of bone. Gayatri is saying it has exoskeleton. Exoskeleton is skeleton outside of the body. To my understanding, uh, uh, um, an earthworm is filled with thick fluid inside. So it's only actually given shape by fluid. So it actually doesn't have a skeleton like our bodies, but it's thick fluid, which, which gives it shape. How about starfish? So Deepak Puhar is saying it moves with muscles. Everybody moves with muscles. How about starfish? How does it maintain its shape? Does it have a skeleton inside? So Deepak Puhara said it has exoskeleton, which means outside skeleton. Uh, Kshitij is saying it also has fluid, but uh, it would have fluid inside, but it has an outside ex external skeleton. Uh, what about this one, this beetle? I mean, most beetles has that, but in this beetle, you can uh, see it very clearly. What, what does it have?
this one is called a rhino beetle i mean like looks like a rhinoceros like a ganda yeah so as people are saying exoskeleton so many many animals or insects can have an outer covering also which is hard which is pretty hard which is called an exoskeleton whereas an in inside skeleton would be an endoskeleton something which is inside would be an endoskeleton and uh, so can you guess out of these uh, animals which would have uh, endoskeletons which means which of these will have a skeleton inside snake snake crocodile have endo snake bee cow cow frog alligator goat frog has an endoskeleton okay bull tortoise rabbit yeah so those all those who are vertebrates which have a vertebral column would definitely have an endoskeleton inside skeleton so if they have a spine they they would have necessarily have an endoskeleton so crocodile snake mon mon monkey fly alligator turtle has exo as ram talavar talavar is saying so friends all the all those which are um, um, vertebrates will have an endoskeleton definitely but snake and alli sorry uh, alligators and crocodiles are very interesting creatures and so are turtles see they have an endo as well as an exoskeleton see they, this one has been shown very clearly here that this one has an internal thick uh, i mean not thick uh, strong skeleton but also a outer uh, hard very hard covering so which protects from outside as well so there is an exo as well as an endo same for turtles and turtles and tortoises and insects so insects also have an outer thick uh, hard covering so Uh, i mean i should have shown a diagram uh, which i don't have right now um i mean i can start a trial looking for it actually let me see if i can look for it I mean, currently, I I can't find it separately. So, ah, uh, so their outer skeleton is movable. It it has joints. Ah, uh, yes, it has joints. Not so many joints like the endoskeleton, but it will have some joints because uh, insects need need to uh, sometimes lift their ah, uh, I mean, uh, their exoskeleton to to. Uh, to fly i mean their wings are often hidden or protected by the ex exoskeleton so so the, it has some joints i mean that is all i know uh, swapna ma'am can you add something to what i'm saying what you are saying is correct ma'am so it the outer exoskeleton is more for protection but not really for movement yeah 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 it's not made for movement it's for movement. protection but they are able to lift it yes I mean, so it's a scaly thing it's not made up of bones and joints right right, right. So, yeah yeah but in case of alligator and uh, alligator and turtles it is also bone Yeah. So, so insect skeletons are different. They are made made out of chitin, as mm. some of you may know. 
so uh, they are different they are not like our bones but like uh, there are vertebrates like this one which which has a bony external skeleton also and so so do turtles and tortoises that's why they have a very very hard outer shell right so uh, if there is any other question you can ask friends so i'll move ahead and now come to the idea of joints so friends actually uh, i mean well this one this diagram is actually showing our joints but it's very good particularly for children to stand up and feel your joints uh okay alligator when they curve their body do, do their exoskeleton move no exoskeleton will not like bend they will uh, be able to uh, like move the the joints which are uh, which are like edges of the exoskeleton so friends uh, hum ek bar inko bolna class chal rahi hai main baad mein call kar lunga okay amit singh is asking what are scales swapna ma'am please explain scales are basically flat slightly it's closer to cartilage but not really cartilage so these are flat structures which are not really very hard but do offer some protection so these are hard very very flat protein deposits which will it's like a soldier's armor basically yeah yeah that's a very good analogy yeah <clears throat> yes it is modified skin so it's, it's a whole outer area of alligator is basically a modified epidermis it's a modified skin <clears throat> yes 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 deepak kumar is saying right uh, uh, like fishes and other reptiles but i believe alligator and uh, crocodile are thicker they are very yeah, much much thick yeah much thick it's really a protective armor actually it's not like that that on fish fish is yeah. like thin yeah it's very soft yeah mm -hmm. so deepak kumar is saying they have scutes i have no hmm. idea what scutes are so these are the structural terminologies so okay okay uh, yeah okay thank you so friends now i will request everyone to um, actually stand up for a minute hmm. and uh, stand up stand in a free place and move all your joints okay as many as you can and see which of your joints are providing you the maximum movement i mean there are some joints which will move a little some joints which will move much more but there are some joints which will allow a very large number of amount of movement like huge amount of movement so you have to do it and if you want if you are able to show it on on video that will be great but this is a request particularly to children bachcho se request hai ki khade ho ke अपने जॉइंट्स को मूव करके देखें और अगर हमें दिखा सकते हैं तो बहुत बढ़िया है मतलब कौन से जॉइंट्स हैं जो खूब सारा मूवमेंट अलाउ करते हैं रॉयल सिंह इज आस्किंग हाउ हाउ हिपो हाउ कैन ब्रेक इट आई डिट अंडरस्टैंड द क्वेश्चन हिपो कैन ब्रेक व्हाट अच्छा हिपो कैन ब्रेक एलिगेटर well i have no idea actually i have not seen a hippo or alligator fight okay alligator skin see hippo must be having very powerful jaws so i mean powerful jaws some animals have very powerful jaws that can break anything so so hippo must be able to break because it, uh, its jaws have too much power i mean that's my answer but uh, others can clarify to a greater extent if they know so so uh, children even adults should do it actually adults should sometimes become children so please stand up 
and actually move all, all your joints particularly important are joints at your shoulders and uh, near your hips the joints between your uh, body and your limbs uh pradyumn i will come to all these joints which you are asking about swapna ma'am is saying hippos do not eat alligators yeah so it could be a fight but not not for eating hippos are vegetarians yeah there harshit dungarkoti is showing excellent uh, harshit great so he showed his uh, like leg joints on the top of our legs the joints which we have which allow huge amount of movement forward backward in 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 a circle so that's the that's also true of our shoulder joints but our leg leg joints on top of our legs are even better than the shoulder joints so lot of movement up down forward backward and circular movements so <laughs> actually because of swapna ma'am's answer i am reminded of a joke i forget the name of the professor who used to live in a hostel with his students you know so at night he was he was very friendly so his uh, students at night came and wake him up and he they had put horns on their heads like that horns on their heads and they were wearing masks and then they said we are devils we we, we are going to eat you so he he wakes up looks at them and he says look herbivores have horns herbivores can't eat animals so you can't eat me so go back so right now the argument is like that hippos are vegetarians they won't eat alligators so this is where biology comes to your aid devils have horns so devils can't eat people royal singh is saying logo ki fingers ki bone chatakti hai to wo kaisa chatakti hai wo kaise chatakti uh, royal singh will come to types of bones and all that right now i mean we are exploring types of joints and i want you to see that uh uh which joints are the most flexible in your body so now who can tell us which did you find to be most flexible most flexible means allowing the greatest amount of movement okay harshal is saying wrist pradyumn is saying uh, pradyumn just to saying ball and socket joint pradyumn i am not asking for name currently i am asking which part of your body where are they located the joint which allows the maximum movement neo wilson is saying spine ridhiman is saying wrist so isha is and hridesh are saying shoulders and hip arm and wrist okay so uh, okay nitika is saying a neck wrist and hip so okay friends we are going to explore each of these joints and there is like a uh, very interesting kind of joints we have so uh, like the type of joint decides how much movement will be allowed and see this has got uh, something to do with the kind of surfaces see after all bones are not only sticks they have the bone end i mean if this is a bone the end of the bone will have it can have a round surface it can have a flat surface it can have an uh, internal curved surface they, they these can have many kinds of surfaces and those surfaces two bones have to fit with each other so when two bones fit with each other how these surfaces join with each other that decides what kind of movement will be there i mean I, right now i'm showing two pens uh, so both both have like round edges so if both were rounds uh what would happen this would this would i mean if both were uh, if two balls or ball like 
uh, ends were moving against each other, what would happen? I mean, think of, I, I right now have two, um, I mean, these are two flat categories. I should take this and put it ball. Can I have some ball there? So think of like if bone edges were like this, both were balls, what would happen? Forget about the name. See, more than the name, see, Kshitis, I'm coming to all of this. I'm right now asking you a question with what I'm showing you. If both of these were balls or like curved outwards, right? If the edges of the bones were like this, like I was showing with the two pens, what would happen? It will move in any direction. That's true. So look at the kind of movement. So much movement, but there can be a problem here. What can, can be a problem? Yeah, a lot of free movement, correct. So lots of flexibility, but what could be a problem here? It can slide. Friction. Friction would be there in any joint. So as Angelina said, they can't be together. They might slide. This joint will break easily. Look, they are barely resting on each other. They are barely touching. There's almost there's a single point where they are touching each other. So this is this joint won't be stable. It will break. I mean, of course, there are other things to keep a joint together, keep the bones together. So we will come to how these bones stay together. But think of it a little jerk and this can get away. So instead, you can very easily take them apart. Instead, what our body has done is this. So one ball, ball goes inside a, a hole or a socket. It's called a ball and socket joint. And it's a very, very good joint. See, can you see that there is so much movement it can allow? So I will, what I will do is, um, I will stick a pen inside. So this is, this is one bone which has a ball at the end of it. The other bone has a hole. So this becomes a ball and socket joint. I mean, I also use a fruit here. I mean, today I didn't have a round, very good round fruit. I have one, but, but we need a, a bowl which, I mean, you can take a katori from your kitchen and take a fruit, uh, guava amrood or a, an orange or something. And a stick a pen or a pencil and you have a ball, ball and socket joint. So this, this will allow, allow movement till the edge of the socket. So here, 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 movement in all directions, plus this circular movement. So looking at the range of movement, this is a fabulous joint and it is called a ball and socket joint. Can you tell me which of your joints are ball and socket joints? Shoulder, yes, correct. And not knee, hip. The hip joints, two joints at the hip, where your legs join your hip, those are ball and socket joints. And the uh, uh, like this, uh, the socket here is less deep. The, um, uh, the Hip one is a deeper, it's a more stable joint. This one is less stable. So sometimes people's shoulders come off. I mean, their, their uh, arms come off. Sometimes this joint gets dislocated, which means the ball comes out of the socket and doctors have to put it back in. That happens after a, a, a big jerk. Sometimes it can happen, but normally our joints are pretty secure. There are things which are keeping them together, but this is this allows for great movement and this is a uh, so we have four ball and socket joints in our shoulders and hips and i will show a picture so here you have a hip joint showing ball and socket and here's a model of this also so uh, but you, the model can be very easily made using any fruit, any round fruit or a ball and one cup, cup or a, a bowl in your kitchen, right? Then uh, another kind of very interesting joint happens to be a hinge joint. A hinge joint allows 
movement in a single direction look at this just single it won't allow much much movement sideways and it allow movement in no other direction so hinges we have all over uh, our uh, life i mean doors have hinges windows have hinges look this is a hinge joint so our geometry boxes have hinges or hinge joints so i mean my uh, this uh, this box also has a hinge joint a hinge model is pretty easy to make i mean you can take just two blocks and uh, and put a tape and you have a hinge joint ready and in fact if you take a thicker block it even prevents backward movement so our hinge joint doesn't allow backward movement it moves only in a single direction i mean which means it moves inwards but doesn't move outwards so uh, i mean here here it's clearer just just a tape on two blocks you can even take two match boxes a maker and make the model of a hinge joint just by sticking a tape so this is a hinge joint so where all do we have hinge joints in our body a wrist is not a ball and socket joint the wrist is pretty complicated we'll come to that so elbow is a hinge joint knee is a hinge joint fingers all the joints in your fingers are hinge joints toes are hinge joints yes by the way here, this is for teachers i mean if you don't have models many joints can be simply shown of course with with our own uh, body parts or using your both hands so uh, for a ball and socket joint you can show this i mean you can make a ball out of one uh, one uh, uh, one hand and make a socket out of the other and move so so this makes a ball and socket joint um see thumb is not a hinge joint thumb shows many kinds of movement thumb is a very special joint i'll come to the thumb human thumb or for that matter thumb of primates is a very very special kind of joint and it has very special abilities that's why see it's built differently it's kept in a different place and thumb allows us a lot many things which our fingers do not allow so thumb is very important it's a saddle joint as deepak is saying it's a saddle joint i'll come to that but first hinge joints are fingers toes knees elbows right so so hinge joint i will show here on my screen also so as you can see i mean here a uh, uh, hinge joint is shown uh, using uh, uh, this is like on, on the knee a hinge joint is shown Uh, but also using a the model of a hinge which we use in our doors and windows Fing other fingers are all hinge joints other than thumb fingers are hinge joints neck is not a hinge joint i will also come to the neck joint right so we come to now a pivot joint so pivot is very special pivot is like a, a rod which is going inside a hole and the rod can twist side by side so first i will show a model of this and this is what our neck is uh, the upper part of our neck so see i for for a model i just have some rod i mean this need not be hollow i mean i've just taken a bottle so uh, and Uh, there is this hole so you can take uh, so anything with a hole and anything else a rod which fits inside so this allows the sideways movement which our neck can do so neck actually can do the sideways movement because of a, a pivot joint and i will show you that pivot uh, with the two upper vertebrae the two upper vertebrae of the neck which are shown in this picture but i'll show them to you uh, i mean the upper the top vertebra is the atlas uh, no the atlas is the one on which this is resting uh, the the up the top most is resting on the atlas that's why you know um, or this is called the atlas sorry this is called the atlas this is called the atlas because 
see in in uh, in greek mythology atlas is the person is the uh, um, is the de deity which is like uh, holding the whole world on its shoulders so this top vertebra uh, vertebra is called the atlas because it's taking the whole weight of our um, our um, skull but that for the, this one is the axis to so axis and atlas together make a, a, a pivot joint and you can see the rod coming out here so i have uh, them uh, i mean i have like this uh, model also um, i have a model here also i mean this of course is a plastic model of a vertebral co column but i'll show you the first two so look the, this is the top one so the top one uh, i mean well I, we have threaded them together they are obviously not threaded in the body wait let me try showing so the top one this one has these two th these does, don't have uh, holes these are the two surfaces on which the uh, the skull rests and there is this uh, in the bottom one the second one axis this is the rod on which atlas is sitting so this this allows this kind of movement i mean not so clearly visible here but it allows it's a pivot joint allowing the rotatory movement sideways rotatory movement i mean it's much easier to see when you have it have in your both hands i mean vertebrae are kind of complicated i mean they are not simple shapes because they have to do a lot many jobs so neck is actually a this movement is because of the pivot joint so that's you can tell your mom that you will not drink milk so this has been provided for that that specific purpose and then your mom can say no you have to drink milk so okay friends so uh, this is like a pivot joint shown here um then we come to a saddle joint see saddle uh, okay first let me say that a pivot joint can also be made with with the help of your one finger and uh, uh, your other hand if you want to show it you can you can actually do it right now also so one hole and one finger going inside and this twists like this it allows this twisting movement or rotatory circular movement so that's your pivot joint then next is the saddle this is a complicated joint it joins two curves so saddle is this thing which is kept on a horse's back ghode ki uh, usko kya bola jata hai um, i'm forgetting the word uh, in hindi uh, i'm forgetting the word if somebody remember kathi yes ghode ki kathi so this is a saddle it's a curve so a saddle joint is one curve over another and actually a model is not easy to make but you can see it with the help of curving both your hands so there is one curve on which the other curve is sitting so this allows this kind of movement and this kind of movement also so one curve can slide like this and slide like that also so there is a single uh, i mean to my knowledge there is a single saddle joint which is our finger uh, sorry sorry our thumb our thumb is a saddle joint it's a very special joint which allows uh, like these complicated movements because of the saddle thumb and heel yes maybe heel i'm not very sure about heel ankle is a saddle joint should be saying ankle is a saddle joint i'm not sure and ankle and wrist are not saddle joints to my knowledge only thumb is a saddle joint but if i am mistaken uh, then people can correct me but i think ankle and wrist are both uh, another kind of joint which we are coming to 
but saddle is only the thumb. It's a very special joint like this. Phalanges. Uh, well, I have even uh, ankle is synovial joint. See, synovial is not a joint per se. Uh, phalanges, Vijay Lakshmi, can you explain? I mean, should I uh, should I unmute you? Vijay Lakshmi, can you explain? Okay, phalanges are hinge only. Phalanges are fingers. Okay, so they are hinge only. Okay. Uh, then, uh, then let me come to a gliding joint. See, gliding joint, if you see two flat surfaces, they can actually move against each other. So, uh, and they can move in all directions. I mean, you take any two flat surfaces, you can take your hands and if you make them flat, you can move them, you can move them in any direction you feel like. And see, if they are restricted, the movement will happen, slight movement will happen, but there are a lot, lot many. So, uh, I mean, uh, lot many movements are possible. So this is what happens at ankles and wrist. So this is like, look at the number of joints here. I mean, these are all uh, gliding joints, which simply glide a little against each other. And that's why, because there are so many joints, this is not a single joint, like so many joints, which make the wrist a very, very flexible wrist and ankle, a very, very flexible area, can do so many things simple of, because of this multiple joints. In fact, I had something which, which had a uh, lot many pieces together. Uh, just a sec. I can't find it right now, the, uh, which had lot many small pieces uh, uh, like stuck to each other. So those pieces could also move and it had a lot of flexibility. So I wanted to show that model. If I'll find it, I'll show. Otherwise, uh, so like we saw, you know, more joints means more flexibility. So so be because hinge, uh, sorry, this uh, wrist and ankle have so many joints. So they have a lot of flexibility. Move your wrist and see how much flexibility it, it, it has. Right, and uh, so I mean, we have generally uh, taken care of uh, most of these joints. There is one thing which we want to come to later, which is our spine. But spine is a very special structure, so we'll come to the spine later. But right now, are there any questions? Yeah, pivot joint we showed and neck can move sideways. Friends, it's 12, 18. So maybe we can take a 15 minute break. So we, we will come at uh, 12, 23. We can take a small break because uh, like I'm moving to a new, um, uh, I mean, a, a something else other than. So friends, we are back. So hi, I hope most people are back to um, looks like some people are still they have still not come uh, so okay friends so we have been talking about uh, mm, joints other than vertebrae or vertebral column spine we have talked about all many others many important ones actually now we will come to how a joint is built. I mean, the two bones, how they are kept against each other. So, I mean, you can say, see that there is a membrane at the edge of the bone 
and there is a fluid filled inside a jelly like substance you see bones are hard so if bones are allowed to move against each other i mean joints move all the time they they move through your lives so, so for decades and decades for like maybe 70 80 100 years they'll move so if joint bone, bones would directly touch so much so much striking against each other and so much rubbing against each other will cause enormous amount of friction as well as you can see so much noise but it's like completely smooth the movement is completely smooth so for that smoothness of movement uh, there is fluid filled inside joints inside like what is called as uh, i mean this fluid is synovial fluid and uh, filled inside like a membrane called synovial membrane so so th this is one bone this is another bone and this is the membrane which is like um, enclosing a fluid so to show this we have just kept some gel inside a ziploc ba bag so some gel any gel there are so many gels these days toothpaste and all that so any gel you can take and i will keep so inside this uh, bowl i'll keep this gel bag the bag of gel and now if i move you can see it it become smooth and noiseless yeah it's like slime so look it's moving perfectly smoothly and even if it moves like a thousand times so there's going to be no wear and tear no wear tear no noise perfectly smooth movement that's what we, we have in our body so we, we can see that it's like beautifully uh, our body works beautifully like a beautifully designed machine so uh but of course i mean evolution has achieved this as we know but anyway so this is our uh, so it, it is a good way to show why our joints do not rub against each other or and do not make ugly noises there is no friction friction is avoided using this so that's uh one thing uh, then and of course we know that when we start getting old some of this fluid becomes less or dries up and old people actually start having pain in their joints because of this arrangement getting a little uh, going a little back so this uh, fluid becoming less in quantity so these days even doctors actually inject some fluid but it only helps a little not not like as nature built it now coming to the human spine this is the most amazing structure we have and all vertebrates have you can see that it has a large number of pieces it's made out of pieces which we call as vertebra vertebra is singular vertebrae is plural and see these are bony pieces so i am just going to show you so bony pieces which uh, fit against each other so they fit very well and they fit in such a, ma a manner that they they create a channel inside a, a, a pipe like place inside where from which our spinal cord goes spinal spinal cord is our major nerve so major nerve goes through this coming from the brain it goes to the bottom of the body i mean of the of your um, torso and nerves come out of the spinal cord go into the limbs and other body parts so there is like this is what they are showing as two vertebrae sitting on top of each other and there is a soft disc inside to to uh, to prevent rubbing and also even sh shock absorption like like it's like a cushion so the cushion doesn't allow them to bang against each other or rub against each other and it's like they sit softly over each other uh, so running like this and providing a canal also so it has multiple uh, advantage uh, i mean properties amazing properties really amazing properties uh so one is first we would want you to compare a stick with a with a uh, 
string of beads. So I have a string of beads here. Uh, look at this. So this string of beads, if you were, I was to compare it with a stick, I mean the stick, I can take a pen or any other stick. This has some advantages and this has some advantages. What do you think is the advantage of, of a, a string of beads with so many pieces? So what, what is the advantage it has over a stick? Free movement. It is very flexible, so you can bend it like this. See, it can be bent so much. It can even twist if you want. It can twist sideways. So twist from side to side, bend, twist, lots of movement, lots of flexibility. But what, it's, was it, what is its problem? Any problem with, with this arrangement has? No strength, can't stand on its own, will collapse immediately. So no strength, lot of flexibility, no strength. Whereas how about this one, this stick? Yeah, so as Vijay Lakshmi is saying, it cannot stand erect. And the, the stick, what about the stick? Stick has strength, it's standing on its own. It's tough, very strong, no flexibility cannot bend, cannot twist. So actually our body has come up with an, a combination of these two. Our spine is a combination of these two. So how does our spine achieve this? It has flat pieces sitting on top of each other. So actually right now we haven't made that model, but in, if in your classroom or at your home, you can make a model when you can cut Carrots, carrots or um, gajar or muli, carrots or radish, cut it into pieces with flat edges and thread, thread a, uh, a rope through it, a string through it. So that's what a, a spine is like. So uh, like a lot of flat pieces sitting on top of each other. So we, we when we make that model for a classroom, uh, so there is like flat, um, discs of carrot. In between, we place thin pieces of brinjal bagan to act as the discs or the cushions. Here we are, of course, showing you. So th that's how the spine has done. So spine has these flat, what we call as verte vertebra. One, one is a vertebra. All of them are vertebrae. They sit on top of each other. And of course, there's a cushion. But this spine is allowing us to bend so much. And it mostly allows forward bending. There's, a, there's an arrangement to prevent much of backward bending. There's slight backward bending, but not much. So it allows for bending and twisting. You can stand and twist your body. Like, uh, I mean, you can see that I can twist my, I mean, not my head, my body can twist like that. It can also bend forward, bend backward. Backward bending, very small. small. So all this is achieved with the help of these pieces with flat edges sitting on top of each other. So we have this uh, very good analogy here. Look at a train and a bus. See, train has these compartments with flat edges, which are joined to each other. So a train can uh, maneuver bends very easily. So it can bend around uh, curves, it can make itself curved very easily, whereas a bus is stiff, a bus cannot curve. And therefore, a bus cannot be long. You can't have a bus as long as a train because it won't bend around corners. So, so this, uh, what a train does, same thing our spine is doing. And it's very good to uh, um, compare like uh, animals which have a spine versus animals which don't have a spine. So here, here is shown a caterpillar below. So, I mean, a caterpillar curves some part of it, its body, then moves the curve forward and moves the curve forward. The, so it, it moves forward with bending or like 
giving curves to some part of its body but that's not how a snake moves a snake has a very uh, it has a spine a full fledged spine like us it's a vertebrate it can make tight curves so it can move in big curves so it moves like it's called sir i mean they in this picture they are called, calling calling it serpentine movement so it can give curves and move in, in sideways curve and it can go even sideways when it wants it can move forward but it can even move sideways by what they are calling as side winding i mean forget about this but basically a snake moves in tight curves i mean here's a snake's spine look how curved it can get which uh, an earthworm can never achieve or an earthworm cannot curve its body like this so look at the large amount of flexibility but also the strength which the spine pro provides our spine takes a lot of load it takes the load of our head it takes the load of our uh, the uh, like our rib cage and a lot of body load it takes and allows us i mean there was this uh, long back there was that slide providing showing um, wait wait here i should have had it there so look at uh, three kinds of forward bending sideways bending left and right rotation all that is happening because of the spine yeah so sai is saying snakes are vertebrates snakes can curve its body into many loops exactly that's what uh, i'm trying to show that the uh, advantage which is spine provides so i will show you what i have a a, a replica of a human spine i mean this is like uh, i mean we have uh, put it together with the help of uh, a thread obviously there is no thread inside a real spine we had to put it together through a thread and there are holes here but those holes are not there in real vertebrae i'll show you a real vertebrae also we have of animals but uh, i mean look how they sit on top of each other uh, and there is a uh, inside the the, the the projections on the back so those projections prevent much backward bending i mean it would be difficult for me to do but let me try so there is not there is a little backward bending but not much but as much of forward bending as you want and also a channel uh, through this not uh, not easy to show here but there is holes inside a vertebrae which provide the channel through which spinal cord goes so here is a real vertebra vertebra of an animal a big animal if this is i think a neel guy so somebody gifted these to us actually mirambika school gifted this to us after cbsc banned real animal parts so so you can see the channel through which spinal cord goes but these are all the projections coming out of a real vertebra and there is like there are some more of the same animal i mean when it comes to the tail they become really big this one is broken from here but you can see this it becomes thick fat and look at the channel and there is this one this must be really at the bottom of the tail somewhere i mean like this one is huge i mean it's nearly as big as my hand and it has this it's like even big in its thickness and even this has this hole running through and through through which the spinal cord goes so vertebrae fitting very beautifully on top of each other and making a channel for spinal cord but see also providing protection to the spinal cord spinal cord is like a part of the brain the major nerve coming out of the brain so even that requires protection from damage if spinal cords get gets damaged all your body movement will stop so so the the rib uh, this uh, sorry the spine or our vertebral column is actually protecting the spinal cord also along with providing so much of flexibility so much of bending so it's a beautiful piece of 
engineering done by life itself i mean um, we have we i found this mala in the market so this mala is kind of showing how places where our bones are long for example our limbs there no flexibility so this portion has no flexibility but wherever there are like many beads they, they they become flexible parts so our body is like parts of it are flexible parts of it are stiff so this mala also has flexibility and stiff, stiffness according to how many pieces it has uh so uh, wait i'll have to so so friends see a skeleton by itself cannot move a skeleton can't i mean only a skeleton if it, if it will move you will say it's it's a ghost a skeleton cannot move who moves the skeleton i mean if i had only my bones here they can't move by themselves who moves them who applies the force muscles yeah so there are muscles attached to the bones muscles and tissues basically muscles muscles is a is a kind of tissue a particular kind of tissue which is made to move the bones so that's what i'm going to now show so we have said that a skeleton if it moved by itself uh, you would call it a ghost so it doesn't move by itself so muscles move so we have muscles attached to bones all over and they move bones one by one so special special muscles for special bones so uh, so this is where we are showing i mean you can uh, see that in the front of your upper uh, upper arm there is this uh, muscle which we call as bicep this muscle contracts it can contract when when it gets a message from the brain it contracts muscles cannot stretch themselves they can only contract contract and relax contract and relax so when this contracts the arm gets uh, arms bend so you can do this uh, i mean for children you can do two things one is one is for fun which is like you can make a face here uh, you can make a smiley face here and when you will bend your arm you will this muscle will uh, muscle will contract this muscle will contract to bend your arm and your smiley will change faces so you can make a smiley and change its faces so smiley will become will have a broader smile and a lesser smile when this I, but otherwise if you don't want to do this just keep your hand here and feel your muscle making contraction any time you make any movement some muscle is contracting and you can actually touch it and feel it so you can feel this muscle contract but see this muscle can only contract and bring the arm forward it cannot stretch itself and bring the arm back for that we need the muscle at the back triceps so keep your hand here and bring this one back and you can feel the tricep moving for 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 bringing it back the tricep has to work for bringing it forward the bicep has to work so muscles always work in pairs they work in pairs of two one to make one movement happen and one to reverse that movement and we have a very nice model to show this so uh, see this we have made with the help of like uh,
so we have made this model with the help of uh, cardboard pieces we, we took thick thick cardboard two pieces thick cardboard and now uh, here some loose tape i mean one side of the tape was deliberately made non sticking by putting some atta here so loose tape in front and loose tape at the back so both sides loose tape and stuck with um, again tape on the other bone i mean here this bone here in this bone so so here's loose tape so this is a working model so see the, the this is my arm the arm is straight right now the moment this contracts this muscle the front muscle biceps contract the arm bends now this arm has to go back so the backward uh, muscle the tricep has to now compress or squeeze itself so i will pinch it so this one brings it forward this one takes it back so this is a simple but functional model require will require some amount of care while making because the tapes will have to be loose um, and we do try putting you can see we do try putting a uh, sticking a uh, match stick here so that it prevents backward bending it, it doesn't go backward it goes only forward it works but this breaks also at times but you can put anything to prevent backward movement so our body also has something to prevent backward movement so forward bending and backward taking it back i got a little loose i'll take another one this and this so bending going back bending going back right and uh, muscles do can, remember that muscles cannot stretch themselves they need other mes muscles to stretch them they can only compress themselves and then relax okay now we will come to how uh, let me see if i have anything else on my screen yeah so the same thing shown on my screen so so this is showing biceps contracted and the arm bent then triceps contracted and arms arm gone back to its original position now biceps are relaxed and triceps are contracted um here like just for interest fish uh do their swimming with the help of like muscles Uh, uh contracting on one side so so there is like one side metals con contract and one side they relax then another side they contract another side relax so like one side lengthen becomes longer one side becomes shorter and that's how they move uh, they use this twisting motion to swim forward again using two muscles on two sides uh now we will come to tendons tendons are things that you see there is a muscle it's joining a bone uh joining a bone so the muscle will have a narrow end narrow a rope like tough end which joins to the other bone so this is called a tendon and see here's the a very famous achilles tendon is shown here which you can very easily feel so tendons are very easily to feel because they are like stiff rope like so one tendon can be felt so so your bend your hand a little and feel the feel one tendon here as 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 you will put your hand here you will find something very stiff like a rope thick rope like a nylon rope which is your one tendon here similarly in your heel as the diagram showed 
um, just above your heel, there is a very strong tendon, which you can feel. Touch, touch your heel, uh, I mean, above your heel, in your leg, below your calf, you will be able to feel your tendon very well. So this is the strongest tendon in the body. Uh, so, uh, are you able to uh, feel it? Yes. So, yes, it's beautiful to feel your tendons. And we do have a model to show tendons also. So, see, uh, we have a model here where we have made the muscle with um, cotton, Rui Sivanaya. So, So we have used cotton to make the muscle and the, see, this is the main bone. So tendons join, uh, join to the other bones. I mean, after the joint. So there are these two joints and the tendons are attached to the other, other bones. And um, the end of the, um, the ends of the cotton, we have uh, like twisted and uh, with the help of glue, we have made them thinner. And so they are strong and thin. That's what tendons are like. So these join, these attach the muscle to the bone. And you can actually see that it's when the, here also actually this action will happen. If you, if we, you will, uh, uh, Ram Talavar is asking, what is the difference between tendon and cartilage? See, tendon is only for attachment of bone to muscle so the muscle has to join the bone somewhere to be able to function its function is moving joints so see it it attaches to this other bone so when the muscle contracts this comes up right so and this this attachment is through this tendon which is narrowing down and its tendons are pretty strong and stiff but but uh, see, if you break a tendon, you had it. I mean, tendons sometimes also become inflamed and uh, or break due to injury. So uh, healing of tendons is much harder than healing of bones. Bones uh, grow back easily or join easily. Tendons do with much more difficulty. Cartilage is another softer tissue. I mean, softer than bone, but harder than muscle. So, I mean, there are some portions of our body which utilize cartilage. So, front part of our nose is cartilage. Our ears are cartilage. So, cartilage is uh, like either, uh, I mean, we have in our nose, we have bone till here, but rest of this couldn't be only skin. So there is some cartilage here to give it shape. So the cartilage also gives shape, but cartilage is flexible. You can do it this to your nose simply because it's cartilage. Yeah, so as, as Vijay Lakshmi says, it's flexible bone. It's like not as stiff as the bone, but gives shape. So, uh, uh, so I have shown tendons. Is there any question so far? So if this is uh, clear, then I'll come to ligaments. So ligaments, I mean, see, tendon join, join bone to muscle or muscle to bone. Ligaments are between two bones. They are like just uh, thread-like, you know, thicker than thread structures, which, which are on a joint, they, they join bone to bone. So, I mean, just to show a ligament, we have just used this. Uh, we have it ligament on the screen also first. You can see one tendon, uh, Achilles tendon here and tendons here. This was the tendon I was asking you to feel. Then these are ligaments. 
So you can see bone to bone are joined with the help of, help of ligaments. Even breakage of lig ligaments is very painful and also causes a lot of problem and one needs to make the joint immobile for ligaments and tendons to heal. So they, when they require time, at times two, two to three weeks to join and doctors do tell us whenever there is injury to ligament or tendons, doctors ask us to not move. People don't listen to it because they think they don't have a fracture. But it's actually, if ten, tendons and ligaments are injured, that can also cause a lot of problems. Yeah, as Nitika is saying, ligament tear takes a very long time to heal. Uh, Shubhi has asked, does fish have both exo and endoskeleton? I don't think so. Fish have only endoskeleton and scales. Scales are thinner than exoskeleton. So exoskeleton is thicker, harder. Uh, yeah, so as Sai is saying, bones are held together at the joints by strong, stretchy bands. Yeah, that's a better description. They are strong, stretchy bands, which are called ligaments. So I, I was showing them uh, with the help of a uh, help of just this, uh, just two pieces of tape, but uh, like they are very strong and stretchy. So here comes bone marrow. Those who uh, are non-vegetarians do uh, come across bone marrow inside bones. Like this is soft tissue, soft red tissue. And mm, uh, it has a special uh, function. Can anyone tell? Uh, Amit Singh is asking which is more elastic, ligament or tendon? To my mind, ligament is more elastic. Tendon is not all that elastic. Okay, I forgot to show one thing. See, um, I have the, um, I have this uh, model of a hand, human hand. Um, this got a little damaged, but see, you can make it yourself. See, for this, uh, there are these pieces pieces of straw which have been put um, wherever we have uh, like where, wherever we have bones in our hands so so at the joints th these pieces are cut and there is a thread through these can you see the thread so th there is thread going through these so these th threads are also tendons so th our our hand actually work, works or we bend our fingers by like actually pulling at these tendons. So this is like another mechanism. Uh, I mean, here we pull at individual tendons to make, make individual bones, uh, sorry, individual fingers curve. Individual fingers or all our fingers curve. So so this, this model actually explains how our uh, fingers curve, curve inside or how force is applied on our fingers, right? Uh, so now I was coming to bone marrow. A anyone can uh, say what is the function of a bone marrow? Yes, bone marrow produces RBC or red blood cells. That's why it's very valuable. Uh, but here is a children, uh, here's a question to children. Uh, Neo Wilson is saying also white blood cells I'm not sure about white blood, blood, blood cells, but others who know about it can say. I, I, I have heard only red blood cells. Uh, Swapna ma'am, uh, bone marrow, does it produce white blood cells also? Yes, a type of, so basic, most white blood cells, the development starts in the bone marrow. Oh, yeah, right. So here's a question to children. Uh, uh, children, do you think bones are living? Bones inside our body. I mean, when, once, uh, when we die, everything is dead. But inside our body, is bone a living thing or is it dead? It's, is it like wood? 
see movement is happening because of joints joints and muscles so see here this is this is a non living thing i suppose this is a bone it is non living i am moving it so we move them with muscles muscle is living definitely but is bone living bone is hard and i mean i'm showing you real dead bones this is a real dead bone so right now it's dead but earlier uh, when it was in inside a living animal was it living so two people are saying no is there any other view? do do some people think that bones are living vaishnavi is saying yes so some people say yes some people are saying no see bones appear as if they are non living they look like they are non living because they are hard and i mean like stone like so but as sai uh, has said like all other tissues in our body bones are alive they have living cells they have living cells cells are the smallest building blocks so they have living cells and they require nutrition like all of your body does they require oxygen they give off carbon dioxide they require nutrition and bones have uh, channels uh, supplying them with all this so so here's the internal structure of bone cells shown so you can see that there are blood vessels coming bringing red blood bright red blood is the blood which is carrying oxygen and when that that uh, oxygen has been given to bone the bone bone cells give back carbon dioxide which is shown here as blue it's it doesn't get blue it becomes darker red so so that carbon dioxide is also taken away so bones are supplied with all all kinds of nutrition they require much more calcium than rest of your body to build these cells much more calcium is required so whenever your body becomes deficient in calcium the bones become weak and even growth of the bones and uh, growth and strength depends on what you eat so your mom would be telling you that drink milk so, so that you have strong bones drink milk or have calcium so that you have strong bones so bones are living tissue indeed now friends we we, we will be ending the session showing you some skulls skulls and real bones so one is uh, we are showing here on the screen so looking at them can you tell something about the nature of these two animals i mean uh, Uh, what can can you say about this animal and what can you say about this animal kutla animal is what is your uh, guess what is the so deepak has said herbivore and carnivore so which one is herbivore left one he saying herbivore how did you know others who all are saying this is herbivore how do you know this is herbivore dentition means type of teeth so what type of teeth herbivores those who eat grass what kind of teeth they have so molars and pre don't give me names please i am never impressed with some when people throw names you have to tell you have to describe you have to explain okay so many things have come here sharp teeth with carnivores look at their teeth they are like they have this sharp razor like like knife like edges so carnivore has to tear uh, meat skin and muscle and so on so carnivores uh, will have sharp teeth these have flattened teeth we will show you real ones also very soon so they have different teeth anything else so somebody said large brains which will have large brains carnivore or herbivore blunt teeth to do chew uh, chew plants so, so herbivores do a lot of chewing of grasses and other plants so they their teeth get flattened they get actually um they they get rubbed off constantly so uh, carni so carnivore will have 
bigger brain do you think why or herbivore will have bigger brain you can make out actually from if you are saying this is the carnivore look at the uh, amount of cavity carnivore has and look at the brain cavity herbivore has there is a very clear difference so carnivore seems to have a bigger brain but why would it need bigger brain why do you think a carnivore would need a bigger brain for hunting and planning hunting is an extremely tough job extremely tough so can you say something about their eyes hunting requires a lot of planning and manipulation to analyze where the uh, where the prey is how far how much running will be required what how much jump would be required exact pouncing uh herbivores have sunken eyes eyes to be used in darkness placed in sockets see both have sockets but the placing of eyes is little different so both have sockets small and big at least here not so visible anything else about placing of eyes you can say Harshal is saying it's at the back. Which one is at the back? So Neo Wilson is saying carnivores have eyes in front, and herbivores eyes in herbivores are more bulging and protruding. See, we can't see protrusion here, but Neo Wilson is saying they are at the sides. So herbivores have eyes at sides and. A carnivore would have eyes in front. Why? How will how will that help? I mean, how will front eyes help a carnivore? We have a carnivore. Uh, 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 no, we don't have carnivore skulls. We have real herbivore skulls. So I will uh, show you the skulls we actually have. But So Deepak Kuhar is saying sideways to protect from predators. How will uh, uh, sideways protect from uh, pr uh, predators? So see, so, and any of you can explain. I I, I will make everyone. I mean, um, wait. Um, anyone can speak. So I will uh, allow you to unmute yourself. So you you will have to. Um, you can unmute yourself and explain how does sideways uh, how do front eyes help in prey uh, in in hunting and how do side sideways eyes at on the side help in preservation self preservation or protection protecting from predators a new wilson can you explain anyone can uh, speak and explain please Neo uh, Wilson, you said uh, wide vision. Shubhi Kapoor said farther vision. Uh, so Shubhi, Neo, anyone who would uh, want to explain? Ram Ram Talwar, yes, please speak. You can unmute yourself. Shubhi, you can also speak. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. Like I have allowed everyone to un unmute themselves. So anyone who wants to speak can speak. Wait. You can unmute yourself. Yes, please. Ma'am, uh, for the hunting for the predators, ma'am, to look straight at their prey, they need a front eyes. Okay. So. And ma'am, when they have to look straight, they have to, and for herbivores, they have to look dangers which are on their sides. so that can help them for protection 
I can't see who's speaking. Just a sec. Huh? I'm Ram. Ram. Okay. Uh, so you are saying that uh, she is saying that uh, when uh, when they have to hunt, they have to look in front. Yes, Ram is saying she is not un unable to unmute, uh, but you are able to unmute, right? Yes, ma'am. I am able to unmute. Yeah. Anybody else also? New new is also saying. Wait. Let me help you. Ma'am, may I answer? Yes, yes. Uh, which who? Uh, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, I am Shruti, and uh, ma'am. Herbivores need. Uh, they have eyes at the side because they help uh, them to see in front as well and as well as towards the side to help protecting themselves from uh, other predator uh, predators that come to eat them. And herbivores, uh, so uh, carnivores have eyes in front so that they can target their prey and uh, that would help them hunting better. Right, right. Thank you, thank you uh, to the two people who spoke. So yeah, to to. to actually attack uh, and see in front uh, like front eyes help a lot for uh, targeting a prey but to protect oneself a wide view is required of all so if there is a, any predator around so a herbivore while grazing would need to have a very wide field of vision to see if there is any anybody coming towards it so therefore sideways eyes so um, Uh, uh i will just show um, uh, the few skulls we have we have some real skulls here gifted to us again so ji nahi dikha raha hai skulls nahi dikha raha hai ek so i will show to you one by one so uh, well this one is in in a poor shape this is actually a goat skull but look at its teeth the teeth are actually very blunt they get blunt because of so much grazing at plants and grasses they have to, to graze for long hours so but this one is pretty damaged but here's uh, another one which is in a better shape here i mean not many teeth are remaining but looking at the front very front teeth can you say who this is any guess and looking at the eyes yes horse it's a horse this is this is very characteristic of a horse like after some teeth there is some a gap so this is what we can see and um, so this is a horse skull the upper part the lower jaw isn't there at all so this was also gifted to us and um, we have uh, i mean this like many parts of the nilgai which we, which we which were gifted to us so this is a nilgai jaw ma'am is it real of animal decomposed so, so it is a real, it is a real skull yes and so other muscles are decomposed right yeah yeah muscles are just everything is decomposed this is the these you know i mean keep lying in the jungles uh, like everything else is decomposed or eaten by uh, decomposers and all that and after that only bones are left bones will take a very long time to decompose so this is like uh, uh, cleaned by nature itself so look at the uh, teeth they have become completely flattened because of constant chewing and this is a nilgai nilgai's lower jaw and this is a carnivores some kind of uh, carnivores lower jaw look at the sharp teeth and also the big canine this i found when i was going through a forest area maybe a, a dog or a jackal or something uh once again this is also you can see the molars or the flat teeth of a herbivore and here's that uh nilgai skull this is very large but it's uh, i mean like pretty broken but you can see the eye cavities and um well some of the nose cavity also inside and the hole through which the spinal cord would come out of the brain so that 
the nose but pretty broken i mean it's not in very good condition but still it's a real one so the idea fascinates me i don't i mean obviously i don't like killing animals but this is animals which were already dead here is like one bone and like this is one edge of the bone at the joint i'm like unable to make out which joint this would be like i'm not sure um then i have already shown yeah i think we have shown you all the bones that we have so um, i mean i have wanted a carnivore skull but i have not been able to get it so far at the full skull of a carnivore so now uh, i just have like observing limbs or bones in limbs of uh, animals in comparison is it is a hugely instructive exercise uh, uh, i mean you can if you look at them and see them together then they are very important things which uh, this is in a bird this is in a human and this is in a bat so there are some very interesting things to see here uh, same with i mean here like um th this is some water animal this is some half land half animal this is also some half animal our bats joint sorry our bats joint our bats joints attached uh, to each our other bat joint attached to each other do they have a ball and socket joint do do bats, bats have a ball ball and socket joint i would imagine uh, definitely yes, i mean because their skeletons are also actually uh, i mean similar to ours i won't say same as ours but the similarities can be seen if you uh, keep them together so that's what i was trying to show you here that uh, look at the upper limbs of so many animals kept together so look at the upper joint the shoulder joint so shoulder joint is similar in all of them so there there is if you look carefully you will be able to see a ball ball and socket joint here in all of them so here here is a bat the joint is pretty small but it seems to be a, a ball and socket joint uh, here so so joints would be similar even bones are similar but according to function because they serve different purposes this is for flying this is for normal uh, i mean our general body tasks and this is for uh, also for flying so there are the same bones have adopted adapted themselves to different functions so here in a bat it is interesting to see that the uh, the fingers have become so large so so as to make the whole wing so it's it's the fingers which have become this large but in a bird it's not the fingers but actually the uh, the two upper limb and lower limb which have uh, which are actually move, doing the movement of the wing so so it's like the same joints the same structure yeah so as vijay lakshmi says similar structure but different functions uh so th it's like that's what as we know brings relations like evolutionary relations that that we are relatives of all these is so clearly visible that all these animals are related to each other is is visible by looking at their bones very uh, carefully okay homology right so uh, with that friends uh, i mean uh, we have uh, like uh, done whatever we had to show in this session if there there we have just two minutes left if anything else to be asked you can ask any question or comment or any other addition to whatever we have said
<clears throat> Anything, friends? Welcome, Vijay Lakshmi. <clears throat> Welcome, friends. Uh, so, thank you, Angelin. Uh, uh, as you know, new topics uh, all the time for teachers and children. And we keep announcing on uh, on our broadcast group. So I will request Asis or Manisha to give the uh, give the address to our uh, WhatsApp group, which is our broadcast group, where they, we announce our sessions. And also our Facebook page, where all these sessions, these days, recent sessions have all been recorded, including this one. So it's lying there in case you want to refer to it again, or you want to show to your friends or anyone. And of course, you can pass on our message to uh, your other friends because we are a not-for-profit and our objective is to enrich science classrooms. So uh, and the only way we reach out to people is, is by word of mouth. So you can introduce uh, our sessions to your friends and others. So, ma'am, how is a whale skeleton? How is a whale skeleton? Whale. How, uh, yeah, what about a whale skeleton? What, what do you want to ask? Ma'am, so how does the whale make movement? How does the whale make, make movement? Yes, so, ma'am. I personally think that they, they have flippers, which are adaptations of limbs. But uh, others who, who are more knowledgeable can add to it. Swapna, ma'am, would you want to add? Or Assis? Let Assis take it. I'm not. But whale is a vertebrate and a mammal, so I guess Assis? Yeah, I mean, it looks like um, how a human gets to similarly to that only this they don't bend as much, uh, like they don't have the elbows, I think, but like they move their flippers in the same way we move our arms. Yeah, yeah, that's what Assis is saying. That's what yes. Angeline also said, that they have flippers, which are like our arms. They don't have like both upper arm and lower arm, perhaps, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. yeah but they have yeah. flippers, which, no. will, which will be like our upper arms. And ma'am, there is a triangle in on the backbone of the so, wheel. Ma'am, there is a triangle-like shape which comes out of the water of the wheel when it swims. There's a triangle-like uh, structure on the wheel. Uh, I don't know. Are where... you talking about shark or whale? Yes, yeah, shark, shark. Okay, huh. shark. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Asis, Ma can... what is the use of that? You can actually, are you speaking on your uh, oh. Ma'am, you are on mute. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so sharks have uh, fins on, like, they have multiple fins. So, um, like, uh, so they're made of cartilage usually, I think, and they, um, they kind of help in uh, streamlining the movement. So they're not like bendable limbs. So the triangular things on the top, that's like a fit. Okay, thank you. They're made of cartilage, right? Yeah, the dorsal fins. Actually, they might have I don't remember about the structure exactly. Anyone who has good information on that uh, can add. So uh, actually it's like, then one has to study the individual organism closely to know about specific details, which often uh, will not be known to even uh, everyone, even biologists. So one has to study in detail. And there are specialists who do this. I mean, there would be specialists who would be studying sharks alone or whales alone, like that. So, 
so so friends any if if, if there is any other question you can ask otherwise we will end the session for today and